So the Model Y is out and Tesla seems to be delivering them like mad, trying to deliver presumably as many as they can before the end of the quarter. And we know the Model Y is built off of 75% the same parts as the Model 3, but today I'm going to get into things that we didn't realize about the Model Y that are improvements on the Model 3 and some things that are actually lacking that are on the Model 3 that are not on the Model Y. So let's get into it. Well, real quick, the features that we know that the Model Y has that are different than the Model 3 are the automatic lift gate, the reclining rear seats, there's a seal on the front, taller side mirrors, a higher ride height, bigger glass roof, larger cargo capacity, and more. And to a lot of people, those are all seen as improvements on the Model 3. A lot of people like a bigger car, a little bit higher ride height, and all that stuff. But here are four hidden things that are better on the Model Y that we didn't realize. So first up is the heat pump in the Model Y, and this is something we haven't seen in any Tesla before. So essentially a heat pump is like an air conditioner in reverse, and they're considered to be 100% efficient because they actually output the same amount of heat as the energy that is being used. Now in the Model Y and all other Teslas up to this point, resistance heating has been used, and it's not the most efficient in electric cars, especially in very, very cold climates. And so this was a frequent complaint that people had living in cold climates, they know that Tesla's from California and they probably weren't considering people who live in temperatures that are below freezing a lot of the time. So in the past, heat pumps have worked really well until a certain low temperature and sometimes they didn't work as well then. So that is a fear that people have with this, but we have seen Tesla doing very extensive testing of the Model Y out in colder climates. So it's likely that they're working on that with the heat pump there and seeing that it works. And then on top of that, heat pumps in general have improved to get to below freezing temperatures and work very efficiently in those temperatures. So again, the Model Y is the first Tesla to have this heat pump. So it's actually seen as a very big improvement on the Model 3, and it should add a lot of efficiency to your car, especially if you live in a colder climate. In reply to a Tesla Rati article about the heat pump in the Model Y, Elon Musk said on Twitter, Model Y heat pump is some of the best engineering I've seen in a while. Team did next level work. Then he followed up with some more in-depth details about it that are a little bit above my head, but maybe they make sense to you. He said, PCB design techniques applied to create a heat exchanger that is physically impossible by normal means. Heat pump also has a local heating loop to spool up fast and extend usable temperature range. Octavalve is pretty special too. Team did great work, no credit to me. So Elon makes it sound very good, but we haven't actually seen any real world testing with it, especially in colder climates, and gotten those numbers from what it's like for actual users who have the Model Y, and that's because the car has only been out for about 15 days. I, for one, can confirm that the heat pump does work very fast if you're driving in Los Angeles and it's 59 degrees outside. So here's my climate settings. I'm gonna put heat up all the way. I'd say right about now I'm starting to feel heat and now it's starting to get hot. So from 59 degrees in Los Angeles, it's getting pretty warm pretty quickly. So yeah, not much help there, but hey, the heat pump works. All right, moving on, number two is a radar heater. So a frequent argument against full self-driving systems is that in colder climates, they're one, not gonna be able to drive in those conditions, and two, the sensors are gonna be blocked by snow and ice and all sorts of stuff. So to deal with that on their autopilot cameras, Tesla has dealt with this by putting heaters on each of the cameras so that it can actually melt off snow or melt off ice if that's obstructing the view of the camera then the autopilot system can still be used. But the radar sensor that the Model 3 has on the front could still get blocked by ice and it had no way to get rid of that ice. Well, when someone asked Elon about a radar heater in 2008 on Twitter, he responded saying, quote, long term, the car will work purely on vision with radar just a plus, but maybe worth adding a radar heater anyway. So ultimately, Elon feels that in the future, radar is not even gonna be necessary for full self-driving, but in the meantime, they added a radar heater on the Model Y, and that's an improvement over what we've seen on the Model 3 where it sometimes could get obstructed. So for the present, this just means this is an added feature in the Model Y that will allow people to drive safely using autopilot and full self-driving in more colder climate conditions. Now the third improvement on the Model Y also has to do with the autopilot systems, and it's related to the cameras on the side pillars. So in the Model 3 on the side cameras that are used for the autopilot system, you can see how big that opening is. And sometimes at the right time of day, those cameras would get obstructed by glare from the sun at particular angles. And this would result in autopilot having 
having limited functionality or not being able to be used at all, which was definitely unfortunate. Well, Tesla actually made those holes smaller on the Model Y, so seemingly the camera can still see everything it needs to see, but it's much less likely to get glare at certain times of day. So it just adds even more situations where it's gonna to be totally safe to use autopilot and full self-driving. Again, we haven't seen real-world testing with this, and I'll be sure to do that in a future video. I'll try to go experiment somewhere where I know it's gonna get glare in a Model 3, drive it, see if it's blocked, and then do the same drive with a Model Y and see if it's not blocked but presumably it should at least improve on that issue. Now lastly is number four, and this is something you might actually know about, and that is the fact that they added USB-C to the Model Y. So in the front console of the Model Y, there is now one USB-C port and one USB-A port, and then in the back of that console for the rear passengers, there are two USB-C ports. So in general, the majority of electronic devices coming out today and the majority of cell phones all are coming with USB-C, whether it plugs in directly to the phone USB-C or your laptop is USB-C, or the cable coming with an iPhone 11 is USB-C to Lightning. Usually USB-C is used for fast charging because it can actually charge at faster rates than USB-A, and overall it's a superior port. And looks like Tesla has added that to make it easier for people with USB-C, which is definitely a welcome addition. Now keeping that USB-A in the front console is definitely a smart move because there's obviously gonna be people who don't want USB-C and they still have that option. On top of that, the sentry mode drive that people usually hook up to their Teslas in order to record the security camera footage on the car, they can still use that drive that is made for the USB-A port. The unfortunate thing about these ports is that they're only the shape of USB-C. They're not actually USB 3.0. They're still USB 2.0 and they can't actually fast charge. So you can use that cable that came with your iPhone 11 Pro and it'll charge it, but it's not gonna do fast charging. And on top of that, you're not gonna be able to charge your USB-C laptop either. If you wanna charge a laptop in your car, it seems like your best bet is gonna be to use that 12 volt plug that is in the center console and you can just get a converter for that that goes to a normal plug. So overall, those are very welcome improvements on the Model Y compared to the Model 3. I would personally prefer if USB-C was actually USB 3.0, but we'll get there eventually. But unfortunately, Tesla actually dropped a few things in the Model Y. So let's talk about four ways that the Model Y is actually worse than the Model 3. Now, of course, there's the obvious reasons, which is that the Model Y is bigger. So the range is gonna be lower, the speed is lower, the zero to 60 takes longer. But then there's a couple things you may not have realized that they dropped in the Model Y. First up is auto dimming mirrors. In the Model 3, if there was a car behind you just blasting you with their brights, those mirrors would auto dim for you. And they just completely dropped that in the Model Y. The Model Y mirrors do not auto dim. Now there's no real indication why the Model Y dropped this, but for people who are used to nice cars with that feature or coming from a Model 3, they're definitely gonna miss that. Next up is Homelink. Now Homelink is something that used to be included on the Model 3, and it's basically just an automatic garage door opener that can also control gates and security lights and all sorts of stuff. Tesla has since removed that feature from the Model 3, and it also does not come with the Model Y either. However, if you do wanna get it after the fact, you can pay $300 and get that retroactively added to your car. It is an actual piece of hardware as well as software, so it does actually have to be installed. But once you pay that $300 and install it, you're good to go. It's just unfortunate that that's not included anymore. All right, moving on, number three is track mode. So in the Performance Model 3, it includes track mode, which is a software feature that allows drivers to quote, customize its handling, providing even more control over how their car behaves on track. So you can control a lot of things like handling balance and stability assistance, as well as regen braking, and then it records and gives you a bunch of data in real time. Well, even though the Model Y comes in a performance model and it's only seven miles per hour slower, and it's only a zero to 60 that's 0.3 seconds slower than the Model 3, it doesn't include track mode. Now this could be due to the fact that the Model Y is quite a bigger car than the Model 3, but at the same time, it's a performance model that comes with performance wheels, performance brakes, and performance spoiler, all that stuff, it makes sense that it should have track mode. Luckily, if you don't know, Tesla does over-the-air software updates, so it's definitely something that Tesla could add in the future for free. They could just add track mode for the Model Y. Maybe it just isn't quite ready yet. And lastly is number four, which is the pedestrian warning system. So in September of last year, Tesla started adding the pedestrian warning system to all Model 3s in the United States. So according to Tesla, quote, the pedestrian warning system is an audible tone played when the vehicle is moving slowly, up to 19 miles per hour, in drive or reverse. The sound is played via a speaker mounted in front fascia and alerts nearby pedestrians of the car's presence 
in low speed situations. So coming up in September of 2020, all electric cars in the United States are gonna be required to be sold with a pedestrian warning system. Because they're so quiet, it actually poses a security risk. Now oddly enough, even though the Model 3 has been shipping with it for a little while now, the Model Y does not have the pedestrian warning system. Now it's not something to worry about if you buy the car today and it doesn't have it, it's not like you have to get that changed legally in September of 2020. It's just all cars produced after that date that have to have that system. But some drivers would prefer to have this system installed for the safety of others and so that they can actually hear you coming in your car. But it's not included in the Model Y, at least for now, I'm assuming they're gonna have to add it in September. So there you have it. There are four ways that the Model Y actually improves on the Model 3. And leave a comment below. Do you think Tesla is gonna add these features soon in the Model 3? I personally think they will. I think it makes sense that in the next few months they're going to add these improvements because overall they make the autopilot system better. For some of those features it seems like once they run out of a certain part from a supplier they can just shift over to another part. But for some things like the heat pump I'm wondering if they'll have to redesign the Model 3 a little bit to fit that in there if they want to put that in. But all of those things would be very welcomed additions for Model 3 buyers in the future, especially ones in colder climates. As far as the features that are omitted in the Model Y, I think we can assume that the pedestrian warning system will be there by the end of the year since it's gonna be required. And then Homelink unfortunately seems like it's gonna remain a $300 upgrade. But maybe auto dimming mirrors and track mode are gonna come soon. What do you think? Leave a comment below and let me know. So I assume that Tesla's gonna keep pushing really, really hard until March 31st, which is only a couple days away because that's the end of the quarter and they're always pushing really hard at the end of a quarter for deliveries. But I hope they keep going after that because the more Model Y's the merrier and maybe one of those could be mine. In the meantime, I hope everyone's staying safe out there. Congrats to everyone who's getting their Model Y's delivered. I'm really excited for you and I can't wait to see photos and videos of them popping up everywhere. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.